Hello, this is DMA's FMG's hacking FMG hack series, and today we are going to talk about the physiology. And in the physiology, the high yield area, people, we are going to talk about the high yield areas of your physiology. So, speaking about the high yield area, the uh, overall the high yield area could be a general physiology and nervous system physiology, which contributes for about 21.65 percent people. So, this is in turn considered to be one of the important high yield areas of your physiology the second most of physiology will be considered to be uh, your 11.77 percent which is your endocrine physiology and then remaining all could be like a miscellaneous one so speaking about the physiology the very important high yield physiology is going to be your general physiology followed by nervous system physiology and then followed by your endocrine physiology and then your cvs and cnas and all those things will go for why there is a very less questions in uh, in CVS or uh, other systems when compared to the endocrine and uh, uh, what do we call a general and nervous system physiology because all the questions could be asked either in the form of a surgery or in the form of a medicine or in the form of your ENT and uh, ophthalmology the physiology of your ENT ophthalmology and the physiology of your ear reproductive systems can be integrated with the obstetrics and gynecology so you may expect to see the physiology questions in any of this area that's why the pure physiology questions were obviously lies on the general physiology and uh, your nervous system okay so we proceed with the each and every areas of your physiology so speaking about the physiology the uh, first area we are going to talk about is going to be your general physiology so in the general physiology the area we are first focus will be your cellular physiology where you focus on the cell structure and function and then intracellular organelles and your cellular metabolism then you have the membrane physiology where you focus on the structure of your cell membrane, passive and active transport and ion channel mediators. So like all the structures like a passive and active transport, in that passive transport you will be discussing about the passive transfusion, uh, passive diffusion and the facilitated diffusion. And similarly, we will talk about the primary active transport and the secondary active transport and the exocytosis, endocytosis, all these things comes under the membrane physiology. And you know, like a diffusion, osmosis, all those mechanism will be uh, present in the cellular transport area so physiology of transport and membrane physiology is quite a important areas in terms of your general and then you are talking about the physiology of excitable tissues like a excitable cells like neurons and muscle cells what are the things they may go what is action potential what are the contractile proteins like a actin myosin dynein all of them are there and what uh, what is the function of each and every protein and that are the classification of neurons we are having so everything comes under the category of your physiology of your excitable tissues and physiology of muscle focus on this uh, muscle type and muscle contraction for example like you are having a skeletal muscle smooth muscle and cardiac muscle while cardiac muscle is a modified skeletal muscle each and every muscle has phys a uh, physical property and their types of contractions you may expect and what type of contraction for example in skeletal and card in skeletal muscle you will be having actin myosin interaction and in the case of your uh, cardiac muscle you have this uh, specific property of calcium induced calcium release and in the smooth muscle you may have the calcium colmodulin complex so these are the things which will differ in each uh, how the contraction will differ from each type of muscle and then the sliding filament theory all those things has been uh, has been uh, covered in this area and then you have physiology of glands like a functions of your endocrine and exocrine glands and how the hormone is secreting and what are the factors that can regulate each hormone comes over this can cover in this area and then we move on to the next area called this nervous system physiology speaking about the nervous system physiology the physiology of neurons uh, for example like a uh, focus on the structure of the neurons like uh, you may have that uh, you know, like a neuronal cell body and, uh, you know, act, 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 uh, axons and dendrites and all the things which has been uh, mentioned. What are the nasal granules? Where do you see the summation potential? Where do you see the action potential? How come you may see, expect to see that one neuron is connected with the, another neuron through the synapse and uh, you see the property of synaptic uh, transmission? 
all these things will be covered in the physiology of neurons and the sensory uh, physiology of neurons and synapses then you have the sensory receptors and motor system like what type of peripheral sensory receptors you are having how each and every peripheral sensory receptors are working and what are their structure and the function and all those things has been explained by the sensory receptor and then you have the physiology of motor system which may focus on the structure and function of your motor system including your somatic and autonomous nervous system including your somatic and autonomous nervous system and then you have this physiology of ans so you'll be covering up here with the sympathetic parasympathetic and enteric nervous system and the physiology of our higher nervous functions like your brain including the memory learning and language you may expect to see here you may expect to see here then you may have the second most high yield area which is considered to be your endocrinology where you may expect to see the hormonal regulation people so we are going to talk about different types of hormone hormone synthesis their regulation and their feedback mechanism how each hormone has been uh, you know modified and integrated this has been considered in the hormonal regulation area and then you have the thyroid hormone how the thyroid hormone has been synthesized and uh, what are the role of your calcium in the thyroid hormone and uh, what is the role of iodine in the thyroid hormone what are the uh, how does the uh, thyroid hormone affects the growth and how does the uh, thyroid hormone contributes for the other major uh, sexual hormone properties and all those things will be very very important and then you have this adrenal gland hormones focus on the synthesis regulation and physiological effects of your adrenal hormones like a, you know like a glucocorticoid mineral corticoid and you you have this uh, uh, you have the scatocholamines all these their effects on their body and their regulations and again pancreatic hormones such as your insulin glucagon and uh, uh, insulin glucagon and other hormones which is contributing from the various cells of your pancreas and their regulations are pretty high yield and then you have a pituitary hormones where which will focus on the synthesis regulation and the physiological effect of your pituitary hormone and then you have the gonadal hormone where you see the sex hormones like a follicular stimulating and luteinizing hormone where you may expect to see the variety of conditions okay then you are having this cardiovascular system where you see the physiology of heart and the cardiac cycle including the cardiac output and then physiology of circulation of blood and uh, regulation of blood pressure hemodynamics is the topic of interest people where every time you may see there is a calculation of mean arterial pressure calculation of blood pressure with the systolic and diastolic and all those things will be asked but the physiology and the hemodynamics of your blood pressure regulation and uh, you know viscosity the resistance in the blood vessels everything is pretty high yield in terms of your straight questions and apart from that you have a physiology of cardiac output including the stroke volume and the heart rate and how to calculate the cardiac output through the fixed principle and all those things are pretty high yield you have to remember in terms of your cardiovascular physiology so the very high yield area in the cardiovascular physiology is always the cardiac cycle when will you hear s1 s2 s3 s4 and what type of phases of cardiac cycle contributed for what type of things all these things has been asked in the case of your cardiovascular system people which is really really important and then you have this general physiology so speaking about the general physiology uh, uh, which was uh, coming again we have already talked about it and then you have this respiratory system speaking about the respiratory system you have to know about the mechanism of respiratory system uh, re mechanism of respiration including your expiration and inspiration and then physiology of gaseous exchange like how the oxygen is transported how carbon dioxide is transported and all those things and then you have the lung volumes and capacity vital capacity forced expiratory volume forced inspiratory volume all the volumes and capacities you have to remember and then you have to remember the regulation of respiration people so focus on the neuronal and hormonal regulation of respiration which is pretty pretty important in terms of your respiratory system and then we are uh, going for the renal system mechanism of urine formation like glomerular filtration tubular absorption and tubular secretion you have to remember and then renal blood flow and glomerular the factors which is affecting your gfr 
and uh, you know, clearance of watch substance indicator GFR, clearance of watch substance indicator para, RPF, like for example, clearance of para aminohypuric acid contributes for the renal plasma flow, while the clearance of your GFR contributes, sorry, clearance of inulin contributes for the glomerular filtration rate. You have to remember that, and then you have the regulation of acid base balance, metabolic acidosis, respiratory acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, respiratory alkalosis, all these things and then water and electrolyte balance which has been covered in the renal physiology itself go so quite a kind of like a low yield topic in terms of your uh, renal system where you may expect to see five to six percentage of the questions and then you have a gastrointestinal system physiology of digestion all the mechanical and the chemical regulation so i used to remember the gastro i used to read the gastrointestinal system into two column one is your secretion and another one is your motility I used to remember in this area. So every organ, gastrum, for example, gastric secretion and gastric motility, intestine secretion and intestinal motility. And you have a small intestine, large intestine, and all those things. So everywhere I used to remember in this pattern, like a secretion and motility, if you remember it, GA physiology will be a piece of cake for you people. Okay. And apart from that, you have uh, each and every secretion with their regulations and motility with their regulations you have to remember. So in this way, you can cover the uh, gastrointestinal system in a very effective way. So within a half an hour or one hour, you can read the entire GA physiology. And then you have the reproductive system. Uh, male reproductive system is not quite an uncommon one, uh, which is very easy to read, where you have to read about the spermatogenesis, spermiogenesis, and the mechanism of ejacul erection and ejaculation. That's all the thing you have to read about the reproductive physiology of male. While in the case of your female reproductive system, yes, the structure and the function of each organs, internal and external reproductive organs of your fe female genital tract are pretty important. And then menstrual cycle, role of estrogen, progesterone, and all the other hormones will contribute for the major area in terms of your female reproductive system and then you have the physiology of pregnancy and lactation the physiological changes in pregnancy for example like cardiac output increases in pregnancy what are the changes in each system where the pregnant women experience that contributes for the physiology of pregnancy and lactation which comes under the column of reproductive system but you may also see that same chapter in your obstetrics so the this is one of the area where you may expect to see the integrated questions of obstetrics in the reproductive area and apart from that you have this uh, environmental physiology which is a low 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 one uh, extreme cold adaptation extreme heat adaptation exercise physiology high altitude physiology all those things are quite a low one so and then you have this exercise physiology muscle contraction we already know exercise induced fatigue you have to know and then adaptation of your muscles and during the exercise that you have to know so these are the low yield areas while well, the exercise and environmental physiology is kind of like a low yield area so mainly general physiology nervous system physiology endocrine physiology and re uh, cvs and reproductive are the main areas while well, the smaller areas or minor areas could be renal and uh, you have this uh, uh, renal re uh, you have this uh, gi tract and endocrine uh, low yield endocrine for examples like a growth hormone or maybe prolactin or those areas you can able to avoid these things okay in order to contribute for the effective score in a physiology you have to read these things okay and uh, this covers our physiology section thank you people thank you we will see you with another subject